do as good of a job as he does, though. He's so cool. <laughs> but he came and said, on me. No, he's got a deadline, so he's working on the house. But he came and dropped off the camera this morning. So thank you again um, for coming out today on this blustery day. Mm -hmm. And today's workshop is going to be quite a bit different than previous trainings. Um, I'm a heart and soul coach, so I work with all communities in Maine that are doing heart and soul. I'm paid to do this by the Orton Family Foundation. And so this is a standard phase four training. Just real briefly, you've been through three of the four phases already. We're kind of finishing up phase three, but we're starting with phase four training, which usually takes two months or more to get through this, um, depending on whether you have a paid staff person or not, who your volunteer team is. Um, but you've been through lay the groundwork, two to three months, exploring your community when you're doing what you called your interviews with folks. Uh, it says six to eight months, it often takes a year. And then uh, making decisions, and that was the action planning phase. So I'll quickly draw your attention to this action plan, and then we can talk about it more later. Uh, Kat developed the first part of it, which is the background of the heart and soul process, a whole calendar of events, and then um, to give the history. And then there's a form that hasn't been filled out yet, uh, starting on page 10. And that's what, that's what you'll be working on uh, as you move ahead in any fashion that you want. And so what I added beyond that are the actual results of your clicker events that show uh, how you voted. And I, in the final pages, I color-coded things green, yellow, or red. So green is a high priorities, high impact, high feasibility. If you went to the clicker events, high. Um, yellow were kind of medium, medium. The feasibility was low, but the impact was high. I, I gave it a medium or low. And then red is like low, low. So very unlikely to happen. Um, I do also want to show you a couple things real quickly. Um, this is the action plan that the town of Meadville, Pennsylvania did. Quite a bit different, a lot more colorful. I'm not giving Kat the template for this. Um, and they took their heart and soul statements and outlined the actions that came under each statement. So if you want to talk about, in their case, it was health and safety was one of their their themes, and then they had actions that fell under that. So you could also group things that way. How so what, you, what happens with that? Who, who gets who gets? To so the action plan is a community action plan. This is what your community can do for itself. Okay. So whether you do, Boxport did one similar to what they're giving you a draft of. Um, you could park it park just like that. Oh, no. I don't know if you guys need to call somebody. Oh, yeah, no. The cross-excavation is... So you can decide whatever format you want to do your action plan in. Um, my communities have done this one. This is a template that is a little harder to use, but it's a beautiful action plan. Um, so it's up to you. The you know. plan is good or the... Is it they're, both good. They're, <laughs> both, they're both good. Well, I think the plan is good too. But the point is, who does this go to? What's your question, Steve? Yeah. It goes to your community organizations. And one of the things Kat and your stewardship team will be doing is taking this action plan out to the organizations in the community, including government, and saying, do any of these appeal to you? Do they meet your mission? Will you, will you take a leadership in this? And in Bucksport's case, for instance, um, Develop a foster grandparent program was one item. High impact, high feasibility, you also have that as one of your items. And the YMCA is taking it on, the school, the seniors, uh, and they're doing it next fall. So that, that's what's in this final column. You haven't filled out this final column yet. So that's a big step to finish up phase three and to move into phase four. Um, My only question is, if yes. you brought something like this around the town, it's in which, why did you spend all this money? And why? I mean, because it, it looks too fancy. fancy. I see. Yep, I understand that. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's slick. You got to be careful. I mean, we ran into that in another community where, if it even the logo, if it looked too slick, it's like, okay, who did this? Mm -hmm. You know. So you have to make sure it's appropriate for what your town. Or you have somebody that underwrites the cost of it, and nobody worries about the money. And you put it, and you put it very clearly, paid for by so and so, that kind of thing. Okay. So this is a little icebreaker I want to do with you real quickly. 
everybody has a little square in front of them. And these are the three principles of heart and soul. Um, focus on what matters, involve everyone, and play the long game. Okay? Those are the three principles of heart and soul. And so each of you has one of those. Um, because it's a small group, instead of getting together and chatting about it and all that, um, let's just take one at a time. And what we want to do is answer these questions about each principle. So who has involved everyone? And you there too. Okay. And so everybody can chime in, but how have you seen this principle in action throughout the heart and soul process? It involved everyone. I think that in our first phase or first or second phase, first <laughs> phase I guess, we really did what we I consider a very thorough uh, inventory of all of the different groups. Yeah, the community that network analysis. analysis. Yeah, yeah. and um, so I think in that, in so doing, we were able to be very strategic about going out and interviewing people yeah. within each of those groups. Great. So that people didn't feel that they weren't involved. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think that you did a great job doing that. Yeah. And people tried important. to feel like they were involved yeah. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Right, we, right, right, right. we gave them every opportunity. Right. And that's always going to happen, unfortunately. But, you know, I think that the fact that we made the effort is, mm -hmm. was critical. Yeah. Kat, do you have anything, any other ideas about how you saw that principle? Um, I mean, in action. I don't know. My experience as the project coordinator is a bit unique since it was my job to get out there and to meet. Right. 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 So I enjoyed and found myself in some interesting community groups. Yeah. Yeah. That you may nice not have that I may not have interacted with otherwise. Yeah. So yeah. And now they don't even now. talking to people it was fun. Yeah. Going to different church dinners and luncheons. That was a really good way to meet people who don't necessarily get out into the community as yeah. much as other people. And uh, and do they recognize you as the heart and soul person? That kind of thing? Or or doing I had to show up a few times for different things for people to get make that connection. Yeah. But yeah. Now nice. I think so. Good. I, thought, I thought it was cool when we discovered and never would have otherwise that South Woodstock actually has a center where mm -hmm. people gather. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. And for the same South principle, it's all everyone. How would you like to see it continue to move on even after the end of phase four? That principle about involving anyone, everyone. Sorry. Is that an all play? We can all play if you want to play. <laughs> well, I think we have more work to do. <clears throat> yeah. And in bringing people together, I think it's beginning. Yeah. We're starting to see cracks in the in the wall that separates us. Yeah. But we need to continue to work on that. Yeah. Okay. I was excited to see this because I'm very task oriented and yeah. have to like putting people's names next or at least like the thought of organizations next to some yeah. of these is yeah. narrowing down. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's a good point. Yeah. And the action plan often is what motivates people to go to the next step because it's very concrete. And people that may not have been involved in phase one, two, and three, when they see an action plan that, hey, I can do that. And it might be short term, but you know, and that's what appeals to me, that I can get in there and get something done. And I've gotten that feedback from quite yeah. a few people yeah. um, who weren't necessarily interested in the conceptual ideas, but right. now that we have something more concrete. Yeah. Absolutely. Where it's a project they can actually do, right. Right. take ownership of. Right. So, so, yeah, so one of the things becoming closed interested. Ended project. So you mm -hmm. certainly should brainstorm who might be appropriate for those actions, but you don't want to tell them this is their action. So uh, in Bucksport's case, for instance, two or more people went to the, either the directors or the boards of all the organizations and said, here's our action plan. This is what the public thinks are the highest priority, the green ones. Do any of them anywhere in the plan appeal to you? And in, in their case, the why said, you know, here are 10 of them that are, we'll do in the next five years. We promise. It's our work plan. So it may be kind of a, a welcome addition to some of these organizations, because now they know that they have community support for some of these things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hi, I, I'm Jane, by the way. Welcome, sir. Right. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Great. Um, Carver, food behind you. Yeah, help yourself to lunch. Thank you. So finally, how do you think that living this particular principle, involve everyone, 
has changed the way your community lives, works, and plays together, assuming you're living it somewhat now or will be living it. I see a lot more organizations within the community asking for community input. Yeah. So, and that hasn't happened before. Process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if it's happened before or not, but I've only been here for a few years, so yeah. I can only No, I think, I think we're seeing side, cracks in the silos, too. I mean, people, nice. it's, it's fashionable now to say, we collaborated with this yeah. guy and this guy. Well, the it ranchers want to see time. that, too, because mm -hmm. their money goes further, so, yeah. Okay, okay. Tara and I, at least we were equipped the local school-age kids, and yeah. Kat has done an amazing job of pulling us in, and, yeah. just, and, and being present in places where the kids actually are and, and like helping host events that the kids yeah, are involved in. Them. How important that's that is. That's not always the case with the yeah. picture community. That's, that's great. something great, that too. too, too. The, <clears throat> the best events I think that we've had have come from getting the kids involved and sort of centering yeah. on the kids. Good. Okay, so the next one is uh, <coughs> focus on what matters. And if you remember your heart and soul statements, are what matters to your community. You interviewed hundreds of people and boiled that all down to your heart and soul statements, which, by the way, should be posted somewhere big. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, a lot of community, in, in phase four, you'll be asking governments to adopt them and organizations to adopt them as well. We'll talk about some of that. That's called the embedding part of this. But, um, you know, if you can take them around with you on a board or you have handouts that, you know, with your heart and soul logo and, um, you know, that's the kind of uh, embedding that we try to see. Um, but we focusing on... The, use the whiteboards <laughs> and, and make some sort of a list that would fit on the whiteboards of all of these things. So, I mean, yeah. people have been tripping over the whiteboards and making fun of them for, for a while and sometimes giving... Valuable information. <laughs> yeah. So now we can say, hey, thanks, this yeah. is what you said. Mm -hmm. yeah. So focusing on what matters, uh, how have you seen that in action? Have you seen any of those statements in action? Or uh, anyone can answer this. We don't have them. Do you, think, do you think we would be seeing them already? Where we're just actually sending them out? Well, I, um, you may, because you're the team that has been very familiar with it. I don't know if the public... Well, yeah. I don't know where it came from because it was prior to me being involved, but our high school PTO's Facebook page, the home screen is one of these word words. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So I don't know nice. which group made that, but it's, it is our. Mm -hmm. Is it this? It's not that it's one. It's not that one, but it's okay. one of those. Yeah, nice. I made a lot of those Yeah. Like yeah. when I first started. Yeah, yeah. I don't That's know what group it would have been that that came from. Um, and. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And that wasn't done before. That's something that you might have seen in action. That's great. Okay. Anything else for that uh, focus on what matters? I think that, <clears throat> excuse me, speaking of things coming from BAM, a lot of things came from different groups once the whole notion of this kind of, <laughs> uh, kind of thinking came out. Yeah. And BAM is... That area of arts and music. Arts so and music. A, it's sort of okay. the re envisioned arts uh, organization. Okay. okay, good. We had had one for almost 30 years that just needed to fade away, but yeah. we preserved the 501c3 oh, good. and recreated one that has more of a local focus. Yeah. Supporting the local artists, creating networks for the local artists, creating a level of economy around arts and culture. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. so so you know, being really intentional, trying to get the restaurants <coughs> and, and that have entertainment and stuff to hire the local, wonderful, you know, musicians. Wonderful. And, and so you know, I see some things very specific towards public art and those kinds of things, which have all been things that have been identified as some um, potential goals. Yeah, of BAM. just going to yeah. take time um, because it's kind of a, also a newly kind of. A, Newly formed, mm -hmm. newly formed yeah. minimal money, raising money, yeah. um, trying to figure out. And sometimes I, I talk to people about this a lot. Sometimes it takes that one uh, champion of that cause oh, to just harness the energy to make it happen. Somebody who's willing to say, I'll take the lead, but I need some people to work with. 
and it just and they, it goes viral, you know, it really really takes hold in the community. And then you start seeing these actions happening. You're doing so much around here anyway, but then you know these things are growing up all around the community. Um, what about living this principle about focusing on what matters? Is there anything about how you live, work, and play together? And I know you haven't publicized them enough, but um, maybe it's once you go out to your select boards and say, this is what your community cares about. Right. I, I think that the best example of that is planning that's going on around the community forest. Yeah, <coughs> good point. And people are coming forward and, and you know, we're trying hard to say, this is everybody's place. What do you yeah, want to see absolutely. in this place? It's not, there's enough. No, we're hoping for no exclusivity. Right, good. Okay, I'd like to see us continue to focus on numbers and data because yeah. those are the things Absolutely. that, you know, you know, people can understand and yeah. as these projects go forward, continuing to collect data on what matters yeah. within each of these little projects. Yeah, good um, point. Things. So, uh, as was done in Meadville, you can take your, you can do this differently. You can, this, the second column is meant for the heart and soul statement. Which heart and soul statement does this fall under? And you can, I, I haven't done it yet, but you may have, hopefully you have a handful for each heart and soul statement. Mm -hmm. We can divide it up by, and I'll send you the, you know, I'll, I think I already sent the Word document for this, but you know, you can start tracking progress and getting that data about this. And then that's when we'll talk about it later, but that's how you report back to the community. Man, look at what we've accomplished. You know, we, you said we care about the environment. Here are the actions we've taken that support the environment. Here are the actions that we take, we've taken to support a safe community. And I, I don't remember all your heart and soul statements, but... Um, but a healthy community. Healthy, healthy community, community. Healthy community. Healthy community. Healthy community. Healthy community. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, let's move to the last one because this is still the icebreaker. Um, uh, play the long game. Play the long game. So, have you seen this principle in action? How have you seen it in action? Have you seen it yet? It's about I, think, I think it's it's a uh, comforting thing to say because we know we we don't have all the answers, but yeah. we're going to continue to get them. Yeah. I think what made it sticky. Um, so basically, sustainable sticky stickiness yeah. is um, having uh, interviewed and involved clearly, you know, these different groups. So that um, I mean, what's sustainable is when people feel that they've been a part of it. Right. Um, and uh, so I think you know that that in itself will help it in in the eventuality of it, you know, being part of the long game. Mm -hmm. um, and you know that's what will be important as we go to this next phase is to go back to these groups right. um, and say, you know, this is what you helped to create. Right. You know, is there a part of it that you would like to own or help to shepherd yeah. into its next phase? And, right. You know, sometimes people are a little apprehensive about taking too big of a bite mm -hmm. out of the elephant. Like help, help, helping them to see how you can do some incremental, take some incremental steps, yeah. or by you know some key person from an organization getting together with somebody else, mm -hmm. so that people don't feel like they're taking on something by themselves. Right. That might overwhelm them into the long term. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, almost every one of these actions requires a team approach, of, you know, and it can be an ad hoc team that says we're going to do this. Right. You know. Up to you. Yeah. Okay. What about continuing this principle to live on in the community? Playing the long game. How do you continue that? Well, a lot of, I mean, I think what we should say is we're, we're creating things today that will go on for a long time. Right. However, we also have to remember that back in 1970, people created things mm -hmm. that they thought were going to go on for a long time. And it's a new day now. So, well, right. different kinds of things are happening. Right. I mean, the long game is flexible. Yeah. It doesn't. It's not stagnant. You have to adapt to changing conditions, the changing mm -hmm. world, the changing environment, all of that stuff. But, yeah. And what about? Um, and maybe you haven't seen this yet, but how has playing the long game changed the way your community lives, works, and plays? Have you seen it yet? Maybe 
we haven't seen it yet. I don't think we have, but I think yeah. we're working into it, again, with the community forest. Right. Things like that. Yeah. I think that um, at some point, and you know, we can think about who can help to facilitate a gathering of all the municipal leaders, and I say before four, so that, I mean, it's one thing about going to their selectments meeting and presenting. Mm -hmm. Another thing is to do a very specific event where you take it from just the sharing to how, you know, what does this mean yeah. to each community and each specific select board and, but what are some things that, you know, I mean, there's been some, obviously the fact that all four or more towns have kind of adopted or helped to support or whatever in spirit, the heart and soul. Um, but it's a matter of then now, you know, kind of saying, how can we create an action plan for the future within the municipal governments and what are some things that are appropriate to do regionally? Yeah. That's where I think money could be available from outside of the area. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that might not be available if a town wants to take it on just by themselves. Yeah, yeah. and the, the question of who is the town? Is it the select board? Or, or is it volunteers in your community? And, right? Well, first of all, it's four towns. Four towns, right. Yeah, it's yeah. towns, so it's, it's the it's municipal leaders that are elected, but then obviously it's the right groups of people who've been involved in Heart and Soul showing up. Absolutely. And saying this, you know, we were part of helping to make this happen. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, I think that the selectmen, the select people are... Um, they are obligated to represent the constituents, right? But right. sometimes people don't take the time to come and speak to the selectmen on a constructive basis. If they go and complain about something yeah. mm -hmm. or to ask for money, you know, this is you know becomes a more yeah. we're on it together. Yeah, and yes, absolutely. you know, we we would like that we, you know, more than one or two people would. Would like you to consider having this part be part Absolutely. of next year's budget or something yeah. like that. So uh, that's the part that is one of the goals of Heart and Soul to make sure that this stuff becomes you know lives on and that lots of people take responsibility and it gives information to the select boards so they know what people are thinking about rather than waiting for the loudest voice in the room. Okay. Here's your heart and soul statements. This is what people care about. We know it because we've talked to 350 people. 400. In, in 400 people, we've interviewed them. So you can, you select board member can feel confident that this is the voice of your community now. Now the question is, does it change over time? Mm -hmm. It might, but for now, this is you know gives you confidence that this is what people care about. So yes, good good points. And I did bring them to Woodstock. I brought Woodstock a very rough first draft of the whole action plan mm -hmm. um, and the heart and soul statements and they were all smiles. Really? All three of their select board members and Vern were just yeah. loved it. So one, of awesome. it. Yes. Yeah. Well, so one of the things you want to make sure you include in your action plan, and I don't think it's in there yet, is make sure, and I, I can leave you these, but um, you know, not only lots of pictures and that background and talking about heart and soul, but talking about what your statements are. So that they are part of this right. action plan, and in Buck Sports' case, they did a slide presentation on each state or one a slide presentation with all the statements, but a slide on each statement. That when they went out to the select boards with a sample resolution, mm -hmm. saying, "Would you adopt this?" I've given that to Cat, but they had a presentation that they could give that went along with it. Whether slides That's are appropriate, idea. but you're taking it. You know, you're out on the road explaining what this work has been about, mm -hmm. and. Um, so there's a bunch of steps there. Another thing um, that you talked about was, you know, do you hold a workshop, <clears throat> excuse me, besides presenting to them, but have a workshop in each community? I mean, I can work with you on that, on how you develop that workshop and how you bring in more community and leadership um, at, in each community that you go to. So mm -hmm. we could talk about that if that's one of the next two steps. Um, Okay, well, thank you. That that was great. Anything else anybody wants to say before I go to the next slide? I want to cut. Pass the cookie, please. Pass the cookie. Okay, we've done that. So, um, 
I, I neglected to say that what we're talking about today is stewardship, implementation, and embedding. That's what all phase four is all about. And I'm going to leave Kat with the milestones, which she has a, but these are the things to accomplish in phase four. Um, the tasks are mapped out in the work plan. Your stewardship team is created. The statements are publicly acknowledged. Um, it's embedded in your community. Uh, the implementation plan is devised for the action items and a system for monitoring. And that has to do with measurement, too. How are we um, accomplishing that? So this, will, this is what you need to accomplish over the next six or seven months. Um, and I know Kat will be part-time at that point, so you've got to figure out how her hours are best used. Part-time is a funny thing. It is a funny thing, <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> So I want to go back to what your heart and soul goals were when you started, what, two years ago now almost? Um, go yeah, to, my very first unofficial day I ever heard was yeah. the day, day of giving. So it's the day of giving last two years, two years ago. So today. today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so in this package called but... handouts, yeah. right beyond the cover sheet before the table contents, were your original heart and soul goals. This is what you told me you wanted to accomplish. Um, and I'll just, I don't want to read them all, but to engage community members in discussions about the future, to chart the paths, path to prosperity and growth, to develop a commonly agreed upon future, to base the vision on all that matters, upon all that matters, uh, to engage the voices and opinions of a demographically representative base of community residents especially those that have been left out. Develop an action plan for, with steps for future short-term, medium-term, and long-term actions. Retain capacity to, so that these values and visioning and planning will be embedded for the long-term. Establish a new method of community engagement that incorporates this process. And other deliverables, of course. <laughs> so how do you feel about those? Let's think back about those. Um, are they still relevant? I think so. I think we really nailed it. Actually. Yay! Don't you think so? Mm -hmm. I think we've really totally taken all of this to heart. Isn't that it's wonderful? Just, you know, now it's just a matter of sharing and, and engaging people to help with the things that they've identified. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rather than just you know helping people to understand that you know you can have all the ideas in the world, but if you don't have a champion for an idea, right. it's probably not going to happen. Right. Absolutely. You know, and then and each of us are, you know, maybe it's a responsibility is not a good word, but each right. of us have an opportunity, opportunity to be yeah. a part of the success right. of something that yeah. we made some suggestions about. Absolutely. Yeah. Anybody else? Alone. Any other comments on those goals? Looking back two years ago, did the focus change at all from those? I think the only thing that sort of changed a little bit was the commonly agreed upon future for the region. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's a big goal that we can continue to work towards. <clears throat> yeah building more collaborative. Yeah, and you, you did off a lot when you did a four town and even additional townships and areas. Um, that's a lot. Well, I think we know we're still working for it. It's not very much knowing yet, but yeah. eventually it will. And, and has not they come around around some support for recreation that, that are that's happening more <coughs> Regionally, mm -hmm. and um, that's always been a bit, a bit of a challenge, you yeah. know, not to load that other thing, the responsibility of those kinds of things totally on Bethel. And um, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, uh, I, I think we've really done, done a great job, and, and the, you know, the, the communities, I mean, there will always be people who will decide that they're not going to be a part of something, but. You know, I think that getting getting the kids engaged, you know, I mean, having those times that the kids were coming to these things, right. hopefully they went home and they talked to their families about the fact that they had participated. Yeah. I mean, that can make a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. To somebody who has never really felt like they 
you know, that they're the stuck voice. here. Yeah. That they're stuck here at a circumstance rather than wanting to be yeah. here. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do the rest of you think? Do these goals seem relevant? Um, if you shared these with community members or you went back to the 400 people you interviewed, do you think they would agree that you've worked in this direction of these goals? <clears throat> we've worked in the direction of the goals or have we been well, um, teasing out the goals? Maybe both. Do you feel like you've been teasing out the goals? More well, I don't feel as though we've, we've really stepped forward to do things other than what we did yeah. in the process yeah. of creating the, the document. Yeah. So remember that the whole heart and soul process is about building community. Because you're talking to people that you may not have talked to before and they're feeling listened to. And if you go back to those folks, make sure they see the heart and soul statement. Say, this is the product of your interview and others. Right. The cumulative effect of all that work. Well, I think that's where you're going to start seeing the ah -ahs. Yeah. When, yeah. when you hand this to people and you say, oh, that was mine. Yeah, and absolutely. Just, There's a few other people. Yeah, that was there. Yeah, I had that happen. Yeah. It would suck. Um, Sean Coffin was like, my idea isn't here, and I didn't tell it to anyone. <laughs> and I was like, what idea was it? And it was the one about replanting trees on the 26th corridor. Oh, mm -hmm. yes, yes. a lot of people thought that that was a really good idea. Yeah. Well, they took on. Yeah, yeah. 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 So part of phase four is continuing to report out to your community and finding the methods to report out to make sure that people know your heart and soul statements, that they're aware of their action plan, the action plan, and that they are aware of you know, how they played a part in it, that's huge. Um, and then giving them that opportunity to move ahead and get involved, mm -hmm. that's, that's critical. And your stewardship team will be you know, kind of the overarching group that keeps that rolling. Seems like we do, <clears throat> we accused people of that in the beginning. We said, oh, well, we'll have this team, and then there'll be another team, and maybe we'll be part of this team, but probably not. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Things yeah. that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're moving on. Um, are you going to have to leave? Oh, okay. Yeah, so that'll see you on Thursday. Thank you for coming. Try carefully. Be very Sorry. careful. Yeah. I will take I some cookies. I will take a uh, sandwich to come. Thank you for coming. And there'll be a video, I hope. So yes. you can follow yeah. up. And so sorry to. That's all right. No, first we're going to edit the video and embed the slideshow in it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you do that, edit them to do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So these are the things we're talking about today stewarding, implementing, and embed embedding. And at the end of the workshop, these are the uh, what we hope to accomplish. You should know how to develop a stewardship plan to continue and further the heart and soul activities, create a framework that illustrates the implementation of prioritized actions and tracks the work of partnering organizations and groups towards implementation, and describe strategies to continue embedding and monitoring heart and soul. So I'm not going to tell you how to do each of these things. I'm going to give you options that you can choose from to see how you want to do these things. So it may, you may feel at the end like, okay, I, didn't, I don't know what we're doing yet on um, the strategies to continue embedding because you have to take this and go to your core team again and say, okay, what are we going to do as we move forward? Okay. Excellent. And how do you do that? I mean, we've got just, I think, 85 items in here. Yeah. Not all of them are green. Yeah. Uh, would you say, are we moving all these things? So, how, so how, how do we? Yeah. So how do remember, we, how do we get it broken down to the point where we can actually? Go? Okay. So there's a couple things here. The action plan itself is not the only thing that you're doing in phase four. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that really is part of phase three, and you're taking it into phase four. Mm -hmm. Phase four has to do with creating a new team that will help carry out mm -hmm. the stewardship. Just left. Welcome. Hi. Hi. I was up to lunch. Oh my. <laughs> um, so, um, so Steve, you'll have a new team, and it may or may not be the old heart and soul team.
teens. Mm -hmm. Some people will want to continue on beyond that. So what your stewardship team or legacy team is another name for it, whatever you want to call it. But how do you take the action plan out? Uh, and I'll just give you an example of what Bob Sport did. I think I mentioned this already, but two or more people take the action plan to different organizations and they ask them, what will you take the leadership on? Mm -hmm. And then those organizations are part of your stewardship team. And they report back and, we, and you, you know you write them again, okay, um, bank is gonna or okay, the arts group is gonna take responsibility for that sidewalk art festival yeah. with others, for right, instance. Right. And then <clears throat> so then you follow up with them. You know, do you need any help? Do you need volunteers? Do you need publicity? How can we help you? When is it scheduled for? Can we help advertise it? So you, you help them implement those. But, but you, don't, you, can't, you can't take this to them cold turkey and go to a meeting and say, here's 85 things, which ones you want to work on. Somehow they've got to have time to take Yeah, I mean, you could send it in advance once you finish your action plan. You're not done your action plan. You're not done the draft yet to take it to them. But you can take, you can sit down with them and you can, um, you can send it to them in advance. You can leave them with a copy. You can, in Bucksport, they went through them one by one. And and through them with each organization. With each organization. Sitting okay. down with the executive director or the board mm -hmm. and spent two hours. And you know, there's some you say, okay, that's not our mission. That's not our mission. That's not our mission. But this one is. Well, I think, you know, that, I like that idea. Yeah. <clears throat> and it takes time. But if you just, if you just ask flat out, people are going to say, Mm -hmm. Yeah, any time to think about it. And the other thing is, sometimes the executive director says, "Yeah, that looks like it's in our mission, but I got to go back to my board." Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, you need you can't just do things and commit your organization to things unless you have the board support, because there's sometimes funding implications and staffing implications and all of that stuff. So I, I think what we need to do is take a list, make a list of all you know all of the bank organizations and add the ones that aren't in bank. And, yeah. And just start going out. And yeah. Talking to them. I mean, that's kind of already started doing that. Yeah, but I can, I'd love some help. Is it, okay, but has, anybody, has anybody seen this yet? It's been online, yeah. Okay. So I'm, that's I mean, I shared it with people. Yeah, I'm bringing this list to the freshman on oh, Friday. Okay. We're having a community partners expo. Yeah. So people who are interested in partnering with our freshmen on these projects, they'll work through, you know, what, what are the most important projects that they think that they can work on throughout the course of the year. So that's happening on Friday if anyone's yeah. super wants to really yeah. be a part of that. That's great. And, and make sure that if you have four times. towns, you're going to, you may have you know, four that's different groups wanting to create a social club for young people or whatever. Yeah. You do. So you put them all down and you say, okay, don't do this in a silo. Make sure you're talking to each other. Make sure if you, know, if you have four organizations that want to create a place for young people to meet, don't don't do it alone. You know, them, you're, that's part of your stewardship. No, but so you I, can connect them. My point is that with a geographically disparate town, yes, yes, it, but it may be necessary that, oh, there, that these things happen more than once. Yeah, good point. Places good in the point. School yeah. Okay, so mobilizing resources has to do with stewarding and stewardship. I want to show you um, what Gardner did. Uh, let's see. Gardner set up what, and I've told you this before, the duct tape council. Duct tape holds things together, and it's kind of like your bank. Um, so you're you're ahead of the game already. Um, but that group follows their action plan, lets organizations know what each other's doing. They kind of monitor the heart and soul work. They don't even call it heart and soul anymore. Um, because this became part of their community action plan. The action plan also in Gardner was amended to their comprehensive plan as a appendix. Mm -hmm. And it's called the, so the comprehensive plan is, you know, the towns, but it's government, what government does with population, housing, the economies, transportation, natural resources, all those chapters that are mandated. But the action plan is um, community driven. It's the people, it's the organizations that make it happen. So in their case, they said, well, this is the chapter of the, com or the appendix of the community action plan, the community implementation. They made it official that way. Um, and the Duct Tape Council meets, I think they meet quarterly now, and it just stays on top of things. How often does bank meet? 
Quarterly, yeah, same way. And how, what does the Duct Tape Council do? do, do they get... Lots of things. Um, so they they um, keep track of what organizations are doing and their needs for volunteers. So they don't, sometimes they plan things together. So they, you know, organizations will plan things the same weekend because that's when there's a lot of people in town. And sometimes they shouldn't plan them the same weekend because there's too many volunteers being tapped and they don't have enough people to go around. Mm -hmm. Um, so they're just keeping that calendar of organizations. That's pretty critical. Calendar of events. Um, they also uh, put together a I forget what they call it, like a welcome to gardener booklet with all the organizations listed, with a little paragraph about each organization and contact information, so you know if you're coming to gardener what what's going on. You know, you don't have, there used to be yellow pages you could look at, and that, you know, now you go like, how do I find? Out. Who's in my town if I need something? Um, and they, I think they may have sold ads in that, even from businesses that want to be listed in the back to help pay for the printing of it. Mm -hmm. um, they do the community calendar. They did a welcome wagon. I mean, there's just all kinds of things that have been part of the action plan that that Deaf Chief Council does. Yeah. So that's one example. Um, This next part is about is, uh, a very hands-on, we're going to talk about it using the flip charts. I want to make sure, does anyone need a quick break or anything? We're good? Okay. Um, so this is about stewarding. And uh, we normally do this as a world cafe. Have you ever heard of the world cafe? Yes. That's when you go from table to table and one person stays and takes notes and then the rest of the people rotate to a different table. Um, so, because we're a small group, I think we'll just stay as one, and we'll try to get through all of them. Um, and usually we play music before, and you have little cafe tables with a pretty centerpiece and a tablecloth. Um, and we start thinking about the future. So, let's see if I can... Okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to start over here. Before we do that, I want to talk about things that are happening now in the Mahusik area. And often there's either an indirect connection to heart and soul or a direct connection. So let's just brainstorm a couple things that are happening right now. Like what are things that are going on in the towns? Um, and I'll list them. I'll just we'll come up with ten or fifteen things, and then you, and you tell me whether it's a solid line, which is a direct connection, or a dotted line, which is an indirect connection. To community forest planning. Community forest. Is that a direct connection or indirect to heart and soul? I don't know. I don't know what's a, what's a direct and what's an indirect. Like caused by heart and soul. Is it something that happened because of heart and soul? No, indirect. Okay. But we are sharing all of the information and the ideas with the planning committee. Okay. So and there's some direct. And I'm on the planning committee. Okay. So, so, so both. So yeah, it's heart and soul. Heart and soul is influencing it. Yes. Right. Okay. Good. 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 Okay, what else is happening? Trail expansion? Trail expansion. Is it because of heart and soul or is it indirectly related to heart and soul? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Before heart and soul. Yeah. yeah, it was before. So probably another indirect one. Yeah. What else? Um, the library is doing a strategic planning revisioning of itself. Okay. Indirect. Indirect, but again, I've shared all of the things shared that people said about the library with the library. Yeah, that's good to know. That's great. Yeah, yeah. That's great. So, so that actually, helps inform the soul is being used to foster a lot of these. Things. Yeah, I share everything. I mean, because all of this stuff was intended to be public information. Sure. Right. 
I've been using it like that. Yeah, and it's helpful to them because it's outreach that they haven't had to pay for. Yeah. Right. Well, one of the ideas that was for the library was like the library should have a printer that people can use. That's oh, one yeah. idea that the community needs to vote on, so it didn't end up in a list of 85. Yeah. But I shared that with them. Yeah, good. Because good. it's important for them. Absolutely. What else? Well, is they, they, we have to understand we're small community, so right. they as us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What else is going on? Uh, the rebirth of Western Hills Access Television. And again, is that indirect or WHAT? Isn't that interesting? Yeah. And it's, yeah. Indirect? Do you think there's any influence of Heart and Soul in that? Or are they doing it differently because of Heart and Soul? Well, yeah. There's, there's, there's influence. There's influence. There's influence. No doubt. In fact, people have done 180 degree changes in their outlook, and I think some of that has to come from heart and soul. Yeah. Right. Like one told me that he thought the heart and soul was the stupidest idea he's ever heard of, but now that looking at it, he says, good thing. Wow, that's wonderful. <laughs> that's a change. I mean, that change happens. It takes a while sometimes. Anything else happening right now? All the BAM work. It's a B A M M. Yeah. Two A, sorry. Oh, B A one, two A's, one M. Yeah. Okay. There was a concert on the green that I thought was pretty amazing. Yeah. Indirect. Indirect. Okay. Anything else? That's a lot of stuff. The Land Trust is also doing a strategic planning process right now for their Valentine Farm. Yeah. But that's another group that yeah. I've shared. And they relevant that's, information. That's about. a group that they got right. They like streaming out of their silo. What's that thing called? Age-friendly community. Yeah, age-friendly. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, yeah senior college. College. Yeah. 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 So there are a lot of your well, all these things were there. Oh, you know, right. I thought they were all started about this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the age friendly community initiative has already taken one of the action ideas and started to explore. Yeah, I feel like a bunch of them relate to things they said are important. Yeah, so, yeah. Good. Lots of good things happening at the Gem Theater. And North Star belongs up there, too. Our service learning. TFA? Yes. What does that stand for? Telstar Freshman Academy. Sorry. Our service learning. That's, that's great. It's directly good. Directly. I know. Are you a teacher with that? Yeah. More and more is happening with the jump figures. Jump. They're very generous. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
or overarching goal? What keeps a community's strategy for change rolling out over time? So the question is, in order to achieve, achieve visions or plans, which is a key challenge, how will you measure the impact that Heart and Soul is having on your town? Hmm. Any ideas? And this is just brainstorming. As part of our like requirements for service learning, we do data collection prior to the implementation yep. so that they can measure and communicate their impact. Yep. So they do a pre-project data collection and a post-project data collection, and they have to visually communicate that. Okay. So, so give me an example of how that might be. Um, so for example, we had a PFD and paddle station that wasn't very user friendly, it wasn't accessible. Yeah. Um, so they did a survey, um, surveying campers and counselors and leadership team to you know how accessible is it, how easy is it to find the correct size, or whatever, it. how is it easy is it to be organized. And so then that's how they determined that that was a viable or an important project. Yeah, um, because and people then, didn't know enough yeah. about that. And then post the yeah. survey again. Yeah. And Just, see. Yeah. yeah, and they set a goal for how much they wanted to see, see the, the change. change. Yeah. Good. Like well, that's great. Right. So maybe um, you could include measuring measuring impact when you look at some of these like action items. What is it before and what is it after? That that's a great one. Okay, what, um, any other way of measuring impact? Just numbers of collaborations. Numbers of collaborations. Anything else? Anecdotal. Yeah. You know, visual. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, good. Often we have a lot of anecdotal. Yeah more than other data, um, yeah. And the, well, depending on what we're measuring, but, but if it's one of the things that, that I think we'll monitor is beginning to already is, is uh, getting more people involved in outdoor education, um, mm -hmm. but through hikes and interpretive walks and things like that. So the numbers of people that are involved in those things. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe track volunteer hours too for particular projects. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Good. Great. Those are all great ones. Um, there's a lot of questions here, and I let's see. The next question is how no, do you think you will make any adjustment to your goals or implementation strategy based on the impacts to your town? or your heart and soul statements. So one thing we did mention is, can you measure impact by looking at your heart and soul statement? Like here is what people cared about in 2018. Have we made progress? And I'll show you an example of a town that's done that. Have we made progress towards that heart and soul statement? Are things better or worse? Do these represent progress? You could say that those, yes. Action plan. Well, so they do probably. I mean, yes. These are all things people feel a lack of. And want. Yeah, so I have measuring action plan activity mm -hmm. and success. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So the question is do you think you'll make any adjustment to your goals based on the impacts? And it may be hard to know. Sure. Maybe if we need to. I mean, they're all meant to be adjustable. Yeah. So right. our goals are fairly not vague, not the right word, but they're broad. Yeah, that and they you probably they probably I don't know that they even need to be adjusted as much as yeah. They kind of leave some wiggle room. Yeah, yeah. The statements are pretty broad as well. And I mean, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So well, that's the next question. How often do you think you'll need to revisit your heart and soul statements to make sure they still represent uh, your values? Any ideas? Maybe annually. Annually? I would imagine that makes sense. And how will you decide? 
do you ask each other, is this something we care about still? Do you poll the community? Well, it's, I think you go through them all and say, well, let's make what's happening. And, and, well, what, the, what, this what is, is talking about the heart and soul statements, those oh, 12 statements, statements yeah. not the... Okay. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about whether the, the list of statements would have changed? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, personally, I think annually is a, a pretty ambitious because it took you a year to get to those statements. You know, it's I would think maybe a couple of years, maybe five years. You know, like or comprehensive you plans are done every ten. Like, mm -hmm. or, or, but or you mean to actually evaluate them, not yes. Yeah. Yeah. To... Oh, okay. I thought we were going to just sit down for an hour and say, you know, yeah, that work. sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, my concern is, is space too. You, yeah. you're assuming that heart and soul is going to last forever. Yeah. Well, it won't. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So that, <laughs> that's a good question. How does that's the, that is all about stewardship and embedding? Well, how does you may not call it heart and soul, yeah. but how are you doing business differently because of heart and soul, because yeah. of what you've learned in this time? And I, I mean. Well, I think yeah. If we can point to the to a place in time where things changed. Right. And, and you can say, well, that was when we did heart and soul. Right, right. But I, I don't think we're going to, well, I, I think that's probably why whoever it was changed the name. Because you can't you can't just carry something forward. In Gardner, you mean. Yeah. Yeah, to duct tape down. Yeah. And you should, too. Yeah. Well, we have no. a lot of problems here now because we have people who had brilliant ideas in 1970. And nobody's come along to change them. Yeah, I remember hearing that. And them. that's what we're talking about doing here. Yeah. Do you know what tools or resources you would need to refresh your heart and soul process? This means down the road. Like, what do you need to refresh that process? I think bank's a good tool. Bank. To get people involved. And to keep that energy up. Yep. Now continue community engagement. Yep. Continue community engagement. What else? School support. Getting mm -hmm. oh, people involved in stuff in different projects. Yeah. Yeah, like I was thinking, could they make our our booklet? Could that happen through the school? Like yeah. Marketing and the community. Because the regional. Oh, oh yeah. We need a we need a sense of community understanding. We need we need everybody in it. Yeah. So the, on that note, to further the community understanding. Uh, you have a booklet that came out of Golden, Colorado. There's two of them here. Um, this is what they produced as a result of their heart and soul process. So people everywhere understood what heart and soul or what their values meant to them. Okay. You remember the heart and soul statements I think I told you a while ago used to be called community values. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of reason they changed yes. the name from community values to heart and soul statements. Cool. But so at what this, point did they put this out? At the end. They said, this is our, this isn't the action plan, that's mm -hmm. not this, right. but this is a reflection of what we care about in our community. They give it out to realtors, to new families in town, through the school system, through organizations. Like, this is golden. And, and they attributed it to people who made the statement. It came from the state. It is, it is their statements. Yeah. Cool. This is our, these are our values, this is our vision. And we want to further your, our heart and soul statements. So, and just cost some money, but yeah. I mean, I, and I can leave you one, with one of those as a sample if you want. Um, thank you. Okay, last question. What will be your primary consideration in updating or revetting your heart and soul statements? Anybody? In updating them? Well, it says revetting. Or updating, updating and revetting. Yep. Just checking. Making sure they're still so relevant, I think, is important. Still relevant. Short. I know, it's, I love that book, it's beautiful. <laughs> okay, are they still relevant? Are they still relevant? Anything else that would be your primary consideration? Do we have any new groups of people? Immigrant population. Yeah, good, good point. Any new groups, any immigrant population that had, wasn't listened to in the first creation of your heart and soul statements? I mean, you went deep to find to create those heart and soul statements, but is there a new population you need to hear from?
that well, might tweak it. Are the new technologies? New new groups. Groups. Everybody's driving like a car. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah, good point. Driving cars. Yeah, new technologies. Good points. Uh, I think another landscape changed drastically. And what do you mean by landscape? Um, like, I guess, um, have we maybe run out of funding to create community forests? Have we had a giant fire that ruined uh, the physical a lot of our landscape. natural features? Yeah. Because you know, yeah. a lot of the, the the things that have come out of this are yeah. people's appreciation for that part. Yeah, good point. There and funding is a big thing people. too. Like who will do this revetting and updating? Mm -hmm. Who's there to do it? And that comes back to stewardship. Who's the group that's going to take a look at those heart and soul statements because they're now embedded in your community and say, is this still working for us? So that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so that's talking about achieve, achieving your visions and plans. <clears throat> um, let's go to holding leaders accountable. <clears throat> How does a community hold its elected officials and public servants accountable to its values, vision, or plan, helping to ensure that policies and decisions are attuned to these public mandates? <coughs> We've never officially said that those heart and soul statements are really a public mandate. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you think of them that way? Does the community think of them that way? Will they ever think of them that way, or should they? Well, I think it's up to the to the voters of each individual town to decide. And if something needs to be a mandate, then, yeah. then it should be. Yeah. Statute. Well, especially when local leadership changes, what keeps new public officials committed to a community's agreed upon values, vision, or plan? That's one of the reasons Golden did this. Yep. The select board members say, this is Golden. Yep. So mm -hmm. can you say, this is the Mahusix? And that's, you know, it's your statements, but maybe it's something more than that. Well, this is certainly the way we feel right now. Right, right. In okay, so the question, oh, sorry. Well, 2075, you know, this people won't be able to recognize it. No. And they call that, I think they call that 2020. Oh, it's Vision 2030. Sorry, 2030. Yeah. So I, how, I feel like people are fiercely independent, and when you stand a mandate on anything, yeah. that you're going to mm -hmm. do, push it back automatically. Um, yeah. So that's kind of a tricky word to use. Yeah, I wouldn't use that word either. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, the first question is, how do you bring newly elected or appointed decision makers up to speed on how to use the heart and soul statements in both official town business and in community decisions? Um, That's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> Good question. What's the answer? No, yeah, I don't know. I feel like there is a lot of disconnect between our specifically here. I, I only know Bethel. I don't know how the other towns are. Yeah, Bethel's not. As connected as the other towns are much more connected with their constituents. That's what it feels like, like in my Greenwood and <laughs> yeah, yeah, seem to have a better, I don't know, line of direct communication. Yeah, and maybe that will change slightly with the new uh, town managers. Some town, like in again in Golden, when they interview for the staff, <coughs> there are key questions in the interviews about the heart and soul statements. Mm -hmm. Like, are you aware of our heart and soul statements? That's Boy, They're on the town website. Just getting to that point. That's you know. Before there, Bethel yeah. tries to interview a new town manager would be interesting. Yeah, I don't think that's who would carry that water. Unachievable, but I feel like that's a longer yeah, like a longer goal. Like that's a slowly as people become replaced. Yeah. So what are some short term steps you can bring into the phase four to get these decision makers up to speed on where you are now or what you've done? I regularly meet with the town select boards. Right now, I haven't been meeting with Bethel's because there's no clear leadership. I have a question on that. So, yeah. if Kat's now uh, going down to part time, exactly. yeah, and that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, in terms of here, I'm going to call it. Hold on, this might be a question. Sorry. Um, and so, your job is going part time and possibly phasing out, is that correct? Or is there hope to? 
keep it implemented? Because if not, we need a work group, obviously, to be able to pull this forward and have it be yeah. volunteer based. And I just don't know. I haven't been involved in enough of these. It sounds like the bank is interested in picking up some of this, right? So that is your legacy team or your stewardship team or whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. and one option is to have it be a branch of bank. Yeah, so what Amy Scott and I have been discussing, and this has been ongoing for eight or nine months now, is bank is growing. It's starting new program development, and the eventual hope is that I will be the director or coordinator, I don't know what the title is, of two of the programs. One of the programs is what we started calling the incubator. No! <laughs> but basically what it's going to do is it's going to act as um, like the community home for ideas that don't have a natural fit with other organizations in town. So we're going to take the ideas that came through Heart and Soul that are bigger than like, or not relevant to what, you know, the work's being done in the community for us, so we're going to do the work through Denny. Good, good. So if we don't find a, a, an organization with a vision for the particular thing, it goes on the bank list. Yeah. But right now that is dependent upon funding. So Amy and I have been writing grants to try to come up with money. Okay. So we have a little money. We're not really sure. Yeah, so we're waiting to hear back from, from grant funding. But your little money is supposed to pay your salary till end of June, is that correct? Or is there more a little bit of money beyond that? We are asking for more money now. Okay. Yeah, you got you're on top of that. That's yeah. good. I mean that so in my experience a lot of grantors love this. I mean you've done two years of planning work to get to action items. And it's not that you're re granting their money because a lot of grantors prohibit that. But you have a way of getting, you know, you're asking for funding for for that. specific projects for, or for your staff time, time the staff time building. built in. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Well, how back to the elected and appointed decision makers? What are other methods to bring them up to speed, at least on what you've accomplished so far? Anything else? I mean, we've published articles in the newspaper. Um, there's regular updates online on our Facebook page, on the website. Yeah. If people want to look for it, the information is there. Yeah. I mean, I feel like pe people, like community members, need to be going to those public meetings to also, I mean, maybe it's not to keep them up to speed, but it's to remind them of the... Yeah, we have to have some in-your-face stuff to I mean, I feel figure like out where, what, this is the, the same old thing everyone yeah. used to read the newspaper. No, they don't. So how many different media forms are we going to have to put this stuff out <laughs> and make sure that... Yeah, creating we'll content the for what, yeah. yep, things yeah. that can be broadcast online or... Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, creating more content public access. Um, so we've done. We've tried that. Yeah. So one of the things I forgot to mention about the Gardner Duct Tape Council is one of their roles is every two weeks or every month, whenever their town council meets, uh, they send a different member to attend. And and it, when they counted all their people, it's one a year. So that's not a heavy burden. You're not going to you know two meetings a month and use slogging through a three-hour select board meeting. Now, you have four towns, so it's a little more difficult, but um, you know, can your stewardship team commit to going to that and always having the heart and soul statements with them? And always, and it's a two-way report. Mm -hmm. You know, you're taking to that select board, oh, let me tell you what the stewardship team is working on. Can I have five minutes? And Going back to the stewardship team, say, "Hey, did you know that the town council or select board is doing this? Can we help? That kind of thing." So that that two-way reporting is a good way to, you know, I think it's a. <coughs> have you been involved um, in presenting to the school board? I haven't directly presented to the school board, but I keep in touch with Marcel Pollock mm -hmm. regularly. Yep. So I've sort of used him as my like conduit to that. But that's not bad. Yeah. Anything that was relevant to SA 44 would be looked forward to reporting. Yeah, I wasn't sure. It's, 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 yeah, it's a friendlier day down there now. Changes. There's a lot yeah. of Okay. The next paved the way for us. So I'm going to move us along. How are local leaders and organizations held accountable to your action and implementation ideas? 
How be, will they be? They can only be held accountable by the voters. By the voters. Well, how did that sharing go, bringing heart and soul ideas to our town leaders? I haven't brought them to Bethel. No. I've only brought oh, them okay. to Woodstock so far, and Woodstock loved it. Yeah, they got super excited about the, the plan. Yeah. They love the statements. They have yeah. a draft resolution that they're considering. I'm going to Newry next week, and then I've been waiting on Bethel until they hire a town manager. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Don't be afraid to you know in the meantime prepare a kind of formal presentation of sorts that's appropriate for your group. But yeah, I, I think um, if you're going to the other town, you should put it up. Just yeah. to at least to show them. Yeah, the don't leave them out, especially yeah. with six months to get a new town manager. Yeah. yeah. Well, who will, who is the hiring? Yeah. Select board. Select board. Yeah, because if they if they can get to the point where they think that this is an important thing to bring into their hiring process, they should be moved on. Well, is there a public um, non-elected official that sits on the? Selection committee for the new town manager? I don't believe so. Sometimes towns do that. Pretty and if it were somebody from your stewardship team, yeah, you could make sure that gets incorporated. You could ask for that to be incorporated, heart and soul stuff to be incorporated in a question at least. Mm -hmm. You know, that they provide all applicants with the heart and soul statements and we're going to have a question about this. Great idea. You know, is that possible? Let's see if they're open to it. I don't know who would be the right person to ask for that. How would you let, let Leverage decision makers to continue to publicly support and play an active role in stewarding heart and soul. Are the heart and soul statement linked to our town page? No. That's a good point. They're broken down by town, aren't they? No, they're not. <laughs> they're all no. statements. It's, I mean, the point was to have a regional. Vision. I have the. Oh, no, but they, but they all asked. They asked for they, they, they didn't do regional in the beginning. We're hoping we can come out <laughs> yeah. of this as regional. So the heart and soul statements are regional. What I have separated by towns are all of the inter like, all the statements from all of the public engagement, community engagement that we've done. The raw data. The raw data is all by what town people live in. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So I can share that with them if they would like it. But I mean, it's. Yeah. So they they would need to understand the amount of work it took from that raw data. So even if you gave them a hundred clips, like hundreds of pages. clips of interviews, <laughs> and then, you know, it takes, it took you a lot of work, and you can explain this, to get to those 12 heart and soul statements from that raw data. But that's right. the process you went through. And you could even, in your presentation to them, you could say, here's an example of some of the data we heard from this town. Mm -hmm. And with combined with all the other three towns' data, we crafted these where, statements. This is where it showed up. Yeah, and that's that's it shows the flow of that without getting them into the nitty gritty of the data because that's mm -hmm. overwhelming. And yeah, it's huge. No, that's, but that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. And then continuing to involve youth because they are going to get a decision. Absolutely. Um, so one of the things that has happened in some heart and soul towns is that planning boards, school boards. Other committees have a youth position. Do you have any in this, any of the towns? The PTO. PTO does. Good. So, and when it uh, it was a school board position, and actually, uh, my hometown has a student, two student reps on the school board. Not they're not a heart and soul town, so it's not you know only related to heart and soul. They're non-voting members, but kids like it, especially kids that want that kind of public service. My son was one of the first in Camden that did that because you know, he wanted to, he wanted to be involved. And the amount of information that kids can give to those decision makers, it's so, you know, on point. You know, and, and, and they would never have known because it's that insider's voice of what's going on in the school. Like an example was um, they were going to put aside money for new lockers. And my sons and the other students said, they, we don't use our lockers. You know, yeah. We carry every book we have, and we don't use our lockers. Don't buy new lockers. You know, that's a waste of money. And they would never have known that kids don't use lockers. You know? so, okay. so that's another thing to think about. How do you leverage decision makers? Um, and think of, thinking of ways to, to, that's again about embedding in the community. 
Okay, third one. Uh, honoring what's important to our community. How does a community remain connected to its core values, those widely shared beliefs and ideas that define the community, who it is, and what's important to its residents, your statements? How does it ensure that important future decisions and directions are in aligned with the values? So one of the questions is, how is your community and local government using your statements in the, in the decision-making process? Now, if they may not be yet. Can you repeat the question? How is your community and your local government using your heart and soul statements in their decision-making process? I feel like when, I don't think this is happening yet, but I feel like when we have town hearings and town meetings on bigger decisions, if yeah. there are any statements that are relevant to that decision, it yeah. might be worth cut them out and break yeah. them out. Is there a one-pager of the statements? Mm -hmm. Yep. Or highlighting ones that are relevant? Yeah. yeah. Like whatever that yeah, so I feel like it should be pretty easy to have it. It's, it's getting able to use it, but yeah, I have the it. more it's around, then... I feel like the more of that's a good point. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example of one thing they in fact every community that I've worked in has done. They the Heart and Soul team took the statements on paper, sorry, the one pager to the select board, the leaders, the decision makers, and to all the organizations. And they passed a resolution adopting them, saying, We believe in these, and CAT has the language for that, so that's an official declaration. Organizations have done that too, saying, yeah, we believe in these. This is the word of our people, basically, and we'll, we'll pledge to try to follow these as best as possible in our decision making. In many of the towns, they printed them out, or in Gardner's case, they painted them on the wall. All the heart and soul statements are written in, like, the Declaration of Independence almost. <laughs> and they refer to them in funding. Like, is this funding decision in keeping with our heart and soul values. Mm -hmm. So if we want to buy a new snow plow, and it's you know $100,000 or whatever they cost now, um, does that uphold our values? And you go and you look, oh yeah, community services were really important to our community members back when we did heart and soul. So I feel comfortable making this very expensive funding decision, because I know our community cares about that. And it's not just somebody who comes in the room and yells about taxes going up, and you, you go, oh God, I can't buy the snowblower. But you know, you're balancing those two, you know, that this vision that you heard from the community with this, with the people that are in the room, and you have in the decision made. That's why they get paid the big bucks. That's you know, the decision maker makes that decision. So how can you have them very public and visible during, you know, in those decision makers rooms, including boards, not you know, nonprofit boards? Can they also adopt them? I think there would need to be a poster printed because yeah. of all the towns and all the spots you can have this poster. Yeah. Like that. Mm -hmm. That could go in all these locations. That'd be yeah. Nice. So you have some of the idea. So Gardner did that. <laughs> like, yeah. Gardner did it, and they, in fact, it's that size. You can get them mounted on a foam board, and they even put it behind a, you can buy a poster frame that's kind of plastic, mm -hmm. and they presented it. Now we've done this, this is our final, and we'd like to present you officially with this. You know, we hope you'll display it in this room as you make your important decisions. So, you know, make it a big thing, and, and don't go alone. I mean, have some backup so it's not just you. You can. <laughs> Bring cake. Bring, yeah, I love cake. So okay. we do, we're talking about the 12 statements? Yes. Good. Yeah. I think, yeah, the more places we have. Them, so if there's anything, any other way that you can use statements and you know, helping them to use the statements. Mm -hmm. Again, we'll be talking about a report card and some other samples that are in your handout. Um, so the, then the, all of the organizations should have a copy yeah. of that as well. Yeah. So, and then, again, this is about um, measuring success too. But you know, could you say in six months that out of your forty organizations in town, thirty-five of them have adopted the heart and soul statements? The boards have adopted these statements. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be a good measurement? Mm -hmm. And then you're working to forty or whatever the numbers are. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know, know just in this community, like that, going through the nonprofit organizations and their boards. I think they would 
probably most of them be willing to accept the statements. Yeah. yeah. Because they've been so involved in the process. <laughs> yeah, I think more is the time of like, yeah. I feel like someone has to go to the board meeting and like make a motion to the board to adopt them and stuff. I feel like that's the. Yeah, but it's the logistics of being it happening. I, don't, yeah. I feel like most would agree. Well, yeah. we, have, we have moles on most of the boards. So yeah, because yeah. it doesn't have to be from Ken or somebody in there. Yeah. <laughs> so, when are the statements most helpful to reference in decision making, and when are they not helpful? Any ideas on that? Again, the statements. Really not helpful. Are they ever not helpful? I guess I guess when somebody, when a town's trying to do something that the statements that are directly in opposition to the <laughs> And do you think they'll have that possibility? I don't know. It's, it's the only thing I think of it would, where they wouldn't be helpful. <laughs> yeah. You know, if, we're, if it's always a positive moving ahead, you just wonder which direction of the statements will guide you. But if yeah. you want to tear down the community forest and build condominiums, uh, they would be in opposition for sure. Yeah. So I, I'm going to change that to needs to do something because I think that it is possible that something will come up, an emergency situation where the decision makers have to do something that might feel in opposition to the statements. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the <coughs> statements in your case, 12 statements, right? There's nine. Nine statements. Mm -hmm. Nine statements that are competing needs. They're all important. So how do... Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you're weighing one against another, and your decision makers are weighing one against another. So that's one, that's, that's hard for them. But what if it's completely in the opposition, and you've given some examples? You know, what if there is a fire? Or something, you know, how, how do they say, well, we know what the community thinks, but we have to make this decision? I would also add that, like, and I don't have a good example, but if, a decision needs to be made very quickly for some yeah. reason. Taking the time to go through the statements might not be the biggest priority. Yeah. Yeah, like an emergency situation. Yeah. Or... It's going too fast. I know. Yeah, right. Okay. I don't have time to check the statements. Yeah. yeah. Or they're moving too fast. So, in all other cases, then you think the statements would be helpful? Yeah. So it's the stewardship's team to try to get those, as you've mentioned, get those into those organizations and those um, leadership groups to make sure, you know, the decision makers, the elected officials, make sure that they know about this. I right. think the post of suitable for hanging, that's all ready to go. Yeah, absolutely. Just drive a nail on the wall is the way to do it. There's I have a lot more to add. <laughs> is it, so if we're asking all of our nonprofits to adopt the statements, um, this is just kind of spitfiring, but if a statement um, conflicted with a board's direction on like private property or something like that, I could see the statements not being useful. Yeah, words. if there's a conflict in mission, okay, I think those are. That's good. Jane, have other communities there been different groups that have adopted some of the statements, but not all of the statements? I haven't heard of that. Or is it yeah, similar? I haven't heard of that. And I, I, and I don't think every community has every organization that's adopted statements. It's mostly government that has. Yeah. But, um, you know, and you can word it in the resolution a certain way. You know, we will strive to follow these heart and soul statements in our decision making and in our, you know, because we feel they align with our mission yeah. or something like that. What we're trying to say is that we're all in this together. Mm -hmm. I'm going to skip a couple of these, um, but how does your community continue to cultivate heart and soul in everyday life? That's one of the final questions. I go into the wall and read my statements. Yeah. They get the constant reminders of what the statements say to us. Does anybody have a glass of water? No thanks. Visible, making sure they're visible, um, you know, everywhere. Um, one town talked, and I don't think about, I don't think they did this, but they talked about making postcards 
that were in stores. That it's kind of in line with the Colorado booklet, but just saying this is what we care about. And you can get postcards printed pretty cheaply, yeah. get them ten thousand, two thousand, and say we're going to put them here. And you make them as postcards so somebody can mail it to somebody. Yeah. You know that's cool. And they put the stamp check on. Out this town. Yeah. yeah the check out this town, and this is what we care about. And yeah. your statements, and you can agree. I know yours are. Dance. Oh, yeah. kind of dance, but you could say even that they're topics essentially. Mm -hmm. So we care about X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. nine things. Okay. I think about too where you have a captive audience and you can't get away, like the grocery store, and I've seen yes. things where you have the, you know, covered in plastic on the back of the shopping cart. Yeah. And you're looking oh, at yeah. The shopping. Of the shopping. <laughs> so like maybe posting, you know, one, you know, in each. Shopping cart. Collect the whole what about in that bus? What about in that bus? Your explorer bus. Yes. You know, could they be in that? Could yep. um, we can get bar coasters again? Yeah, yeah bar coasters. Bar yeah. Bar yeah. And then digitally, I think if you put them right up on the um, chamber site, new businesses yeah. would go here and go, oh, yeah. done. As long as and they if they click on the it, they can see the whole statement. Would craft a lot of writing for upcoming businesses. So from the Chamber's perspective, and I've heard this in other heart and soul towns, developers and others who invest in the community feel like you know yourself when you have your heart and soul statements. Mm -hmm. You know what matters to you. And so we know up front that this is what matters to you. We're not going in there going to be pushed around and blindsided because this we know this is what you care about. So it's, yeah, it's helpful. Given every developer comes into the yeah. Okay, a couple more. What about if somebody owns a theater? Credits. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Credits. Yeah. Absolutely. Not for advertising before. Yeah. For the clicker events, we had to slide up. That's a theater. Never happened in here. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. All kinds of ways, but think it's it's about marketing and getting this out into the community. Yeah. Getting it on the Telstar sign. They could have that ah, when they have a, yeah. a vacation or time when they don't need something on the sign, and we could put the education ones up. Yeah, heart and soul. Yeah. And if you think of it, it reminds me of Woodstock sign, too. Yeah. Yeah. And you can now number it. You can say heart and soul value number one, yeah. heart and soul number 12, yeah. or nine, and you know, yeah. so that yeah. they know they're more coming. Yeah. Um, okay. The next one is about sustaining community engagement. So remember, you change the way, sorry, do you oh, like a photo contest where you have like the statement of the month of the day, yeah. and you have, you, you know, show us how this yeah. is, yeah. Yeah. what does this look like, photo contest, yeah, yeah, yeah. photo contest, I'll put that down too, yeah, statement of the week, you just yeah. keep rotating through, yeah, you've got great photos for each guy, so you have a winner in that, yes. great, whatever. okay, so how do communities, sorry, how do a community's residents stay continually engaged over time, remaining involved in important local issues, civic conversations, and policy decisions that are vital to the community's future? What keeps residents involved and active? What keeps engagement vital, fresh, and fun? So you've changed the way you reach out to people through this story gathering and these interviews, how you've listened to people how you've collected information from them. So how do you continue high levels of engagement and foster a participatory culture in your town? I think we need to see progress, or folks don't buy into things that are said. So how will you see progress? By checking off some of these. In the, in the action, action plan. plan. Yeah. So that's one thing. Uh, one of the things they did in Bucksport was a store. One of their actions was a story walk along the river, so you could go from station to station and read part of a children's book. Um, and they put sponsored by Community Heart and Soul. So there was always that connection back to Heart and Soul. But that was progress in their action plan. And then uh, the coordinator, wait, we should cover here, but the coordinator goes back and talks to the select board. We just want you to know that this is what's happened in the last couple months. And these are heart and soul. So they keep reporting back. I think public celebration has to go along with that. Yeah. These people need direct recognition. And also people who do know that something's been completed. Yeah. For people that feel yeah. invested and want to reinvest. So Kat was mentioning earlier about um, before you folks came in, but celebrating heart and soul, and when you get to the end of phase four, and 
do you have like some kind of recognition, a volunteer of the month, or some way of continuing? Maybe it's somebody who's connected to each of those heart and soul stadiums. So you find, you find all the people that, that volunteered, and, and everyone who gave a statement volunteered. Yeah. So you could have a special button for everybody who was volunteered. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how to volunteer. Yeah. Buttons. And just continuing to uh, encourage volunteer events. I mean, you're always you get always have groups that are calling out, wishing they had volunteers, and when somebody shows up, they don't know what to do. But anyway, to encourage monthly volunteer yeah. events on the part of the organization. Okay, I'm going to um, try to move on a little bit more. Um, are there any barriers to continuing to engage the public in fostering and participating in participatory culture? Any barriers you see? Transportation. Uh, because people have to attend in person? Is that right? If they have to. If, if they. they would probably. Or if they... Or um, not everyone has like high speed internet or things yeah. like that. You know, or those are often going to be the same people to yeah. have, have lack of transportation. Absolutely. Okay. Um, can you ensure that your stewardship plan and team? How can you ensure that your stewardship plan and team will be successful? <coughs> and your stewardship plan. So no burnout, having term limits, effective communication, team building. Um, that's something I could help you with because I've done a lot of that training on, on team building um, and recognizing the skills that people bring and making sure you tap into those skills. Um, don't ask people to do things they don't give a darn about. You know, you just, it just burns them out. It really would be a model for how do you, how do you keep your board in fact? Exactly. Same as board. Yes. Logistics question. Is yeah. the stewardship team just like this group of volunteers? Because this isn't its own official organization. It right? depends. It's up to you. So when we were just talking about it possibly being embedded in bank okay. as a separate uh, board or group um, with overlap. Um, it could which, bank committee. It could, yes. committee. It yeah. could have representation from your select boards. The reason I ask is because I, I find one, I think one of the reasons that BAM has been so successful in the yeah. last like, year is because they aren't actually bored. Like the chamber right now is oh. doing all their board duties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but honestly, so it means they, they don't have to problem. like have the logistical meetings of the, like, so they actually can just like have meetings and make plans and take action. Yeah. So I, I think that's sort of an interesting look. Yeah. That just happened out of necessity, it wasn't a good choice. Well, that's a good point. But it's just like the farmers. They spent years trying to organize because nobody wanted to organize. Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Uh, uh, can you remove some of that mundane stuff from them so, so they can focus stuff. on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how that, but I feel like that helps with burnout probably. Yeah, absolutely. So that's what we've done from day one with this because it, it's not its own organization. Yeah, it's a project that the community decided they wanted to do. So I've had ad projects that this will sponsor. Okay. So I don't know. A 501c3 yeah, status okay. or anything. Um, bank is moving to get theirs right now. But yeah, yeah, okay. So bank would have a board, like an official board. Um, but I'm not envisioning like the Lucid Cart and Soul would have its own separate board 
I feel like you have to have something. You have to have a team. Yeah, a team. A team. Sure we were on or not on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steer or something. You know, I just mean like if those people can focus more. I feel like you can stay engaged when you're like feeling like your work is accomplishing something. Good point. And so that. That's why I like yeah. the language of a work group rather than a committee because it mm -hmm. sounds like you sit around and talk about stuff. Right. And yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, and I think we can call it whatever we want. So, right? you know, yeah. every even that committee or team yeah. needs a, like, a mission statement or purpose. Mm -hmm. So you do you spend some time figuring that out. And, you, and I agree, you don't want to be reviewing financial reports and filing to the IRS and doing all that other stuff if your goal is you know, if you can be embedded somewhere else. Um, well, you're, you're the community cheerleading team. Yeah, absolutely. That might turn people off. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Achievable um, goals. Uh, yeah. Achievable yeah. goals. <laughs> right. And I think short, medium, and long term helps. Yeah. Team morale. Just so you're notching out some short term as you go. Yeah. Yeah. You can feel like yeah. a okay. 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 is on the way. <laughs> So short, medium, and long-term goals, and again, that's part of your action plan. If that, if their goal is to carry out some of the action plan, you know, can we do five of these a year or 15 of these a year with the help of all these other groups? And your stewardship team doesn't have to be involved in every one of these actions. There may be a few, like and I've explained the welcome wagon or the preparing the booklet or the community calendar. Maybe there are some things that that stewardship team wants to do, but, but the rest of them are farmed out to others who are more appropriate taking the lead in that. Okay, last one. Why do I, I just want to bring up one more question we don't have to talk about. Um, but do more people in your community feel like they're responsible for maintaining and stewarding it? What does it look like? How can you continue to build it? Mm -hmm. So thinking about making sure that it's not always the same people, but there's some turnover and there's new people coming in because it's so exciting to be part of this group. It would be a great, great ownership. Uh, it would be nice yeah. for everybody to talk about what we did. And right, what we. They did. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, last one is responding to a changing world. How does a community better prepare itself and respond to the dizzying number of trends and issues on problem horizon that reflect a changing world? For example, growing and declining growing, declining, or diversifying population, an economy undergoing restructuring, or threats to the environment or local livability. How does a community plan and prepare for things that cannot easily be predicted, including natural and industrial disasters and other community emergencies? In other words, how does a community build greater resistance? So the question, this is about resilience. So the, one of the questions is, has your town grown or experienced success in a way that might threaten or challenge your heart and soul statements? And if so, what's your plan for addressing this? I feel like the opposite is happening here right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you mean? I feel like the town is changing towards being more like in line with the, these statements. It is going towards the state. Yeah. As oh, good. To. Yeah. It's taken a lot of work to make it the whole process, like to educate the leadership about it, and also to continue to update them about what's going on. Mm -hmm. It took a lot for them to really sort of buy into it. Yeah. I also just think about like just Bethel in general, yeah. out, outside of heart and soul. Like I feel like it's tried to hold on pretty strongly to like it's old infrastructures and yeah mm -hmm. it's slowly coming around this idea that we uh, yeah that there has to be multiple ways to yeah. have yeah. a sustainable Good. community here Good. Yeah. but not 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 getting rid of those the, like you know the more traditional sort of things that have made this economy yeah. stable here but they definitely can't be all there is here now yeah. i think people are finally yeah. seem to be coming Good. around on that mm -hmm. okay because I mean, a lot of these statements are related to like the environment and access to the outdoors and yeah. things like that. That I feel like I hope at least is becoming more important for yeah. the town at large. Well, maybe by emphasizing these statements, you know, then people say, okay, that is what we care about, and you know, we should be leaning that way. 
you know, and then some of them I feel like really relate to where the town's past, like small town feel, community yeah. spirit, like those all kind yeah. of relate to I feel like what people are afraid of losing. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, good point. Anybody yeah. else? I think there's anybody right. pushing back on any of these. I think there are things that people who don't want to I build their cars <laughs> here and don't want outsiders and, mm -hmm. and I do oh, think yeah. that stuff in Bethlehem yeah, certainly somewhere. hurts our livability like we don't have affordable housing right. because, right. Of, because right. of that yeah and that's why I mean you know that's like, often a stress point I mean that's a you know a hard challenge so yeah I do yeah I do think there probably is some conflict in, in there but yeah and the livability statement is an aspirational statement no I I feel very strongly that our community needs affordable housing yeah, yeah, I think that. Karen, yeah, why do you have the that? economy? I feel like it, it is very challenging now for, um, I would say, the majority of people living in Western Maine. Yeah. The cost of living has gone up so much more quickly than wages and so, uh, benefits. Yeah. Benefits are pretty much gone. <laughs> Even in organizations where they used to have some, they're really bad now. Yeah. So, so that's a, often a push point. So how do you maintain these quality of life things when the decision makers have to make decisions that are affecting the economy, or it's being done to you? You know, the changes are happening, mm -hmm. and so how do you uphold these values while these changes are happening? And that's that's that, that's the whole point of this well, resilience. Yeah, you know, that's what happens. You see a, a new day dawning, and you say, okay. How, how do we maintain these values in the face of this new day? Yeah. What do we have to do differently? Well, that's the next question. So how, if you've experienced a lot of change in your town, when you have a new business right out here, um, how have you managed it? And do you think these new, you know, the new developments are upholding your, your heart and soul values? And maybe they are because they're in town, it's walkable, that kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Other people would say, no, that's not in keeping with the character of our town, but it's there, so okay. So that's that's the rub, in a, and I like coffee. But, <laughs> but you know, so that that is it. But how have you managed change uh, in the past? I think in certain circumstances, poorly. Yeah. Like the dollar store was the example that I heard come up most frequently with people. Yeah. Like people were just. Like annoyed that there, it snuck in. It snuck in. People yeah. felt like there was not an open process in which they could express their opinions about it being right where it is. So that is common across Maine mm -hmm. with that business. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> not just that, but there's like three of them. There's yeah. Dollar Store, Dollar General, I can't remember. Family Dollar. Family Dollar. Family Dollar. That's yeah. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> so they are, uh, and I hear it all the time that they are these new uh, because retail is allowed, a certain square footage is allowed, and they fit into that market. And they have slipped in. Some would say, others would say, welcome. You know, they're selling food. It's cheap items. We need it. And I don't want to drive 50 miles to get those things. So mm -hmm. that's the rub. You know, that is the balance between having a community that's for everybody. So that's mm -hmm. it's a tough. It's tough, a tough decision, but but I hear that a lot. It's not just here. Okay. Um, if you have experienced growth or success, how has it affected the affordability of your town for residents? Is your residents or is your town experiencing gentrification? I think it has in the past with the Sunday River Resort growth. Yeah. yeah. Well, a lot of the old homes have been fixed up, which is lovely, but then they're they're. Uh, more expensive and more difficult yeah. for people to live in. Yeah. Well, I know I heard in like a lot of the stories and the interviews, people who moved here in the 70s and were able to buy a house on Mason Street yeah. as a young family with kids. Yeah, and now that's not that's possible. That's really hard now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and we talked to Kent I've heard. Or even a rental day, you had an Airbnb if I can make you know, $300 uh, yeah, a night. Good point. Why would I rent for $600 a month? Yeah, yeah. finding rental properties is a huge challenge, especially in the tourist economies, because yep. um, Airbnb short-term rentals take a lot off the market. A lot of towns are limiting those, mm -hmm. passing ordinances that say it must be seven days minimum, blah, 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 blah. And the owner must be in the house, can't be an off, off 
um, site owner. So didn't the South Portland just outright ban yeah. them? Yeah. I they think they might have. I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Um, let's see. What tools would be helpful for you to help manage the growth or success that will be the result from your heart and soul process? Again, what, what tools would be helpful for you to manage the growth and or the success that will result or has resulted from your heart and soul process? What do you need? Marketing materials. Marketing materials. Mm -hmm. yeah, I like your specialties column. Say that again? I, I like that special citizen column. It's always nice to ah. Yeah. And you use that in heart and soul. Yeah. The Bethel Citizen column, great. Maybe, uh, do you get that weekly? No, I probably could again. I was going to say monthly would probably be fine as the project yeah, continued. But yeah, I send updates in now that there's been the, the switch of editors, not as frequently. I mean, things like this are a tool, right? Yeah, that's your action plan. I mean, it, I feel like it, um, it's easy to not like put the baseline down when you're starting something. Yeah. And so then it's hard to measure your success. You yeah. can actually say like, we only had two miles of sidewalk in yeah. or something. So we're gonna quickly move into that in a second hand unless somebody needs a break. Um, Cause I wanna make sure I get you out of here by two o'clock. But the, the last question is thinking about how the Orton Family Foundation could help towns prepare for some certain scenarios after the completion of Heart and Soul. Like is there anything that you think that Orton could or be help, could be helping with? Maybe grant writing support, grant writing. Okay. Ability to share with others, share share experiences with others. Yeah. Yeah. So there are just you know there are community of practice phone calls every month that anybody can call into and listen to what other communities are doing. But they also have their website and um, email that go, comes out that shares a lot of what other communities are doing. And there's a success page. After you've done this, um, they'll, they'll do a heart and soul success page on your project, what you've accomplished. Mm -hmm. So that'll come out as a result. And it's a good way of sharing all this. It's a great way to steal ideas. Absolutely. Done that. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> And that's on the Orton Family Foundation website. Yep. yep. Orton.org. So, uh, speaking of that, the next slide is about great examples to borrow and share. Uh, let's talk, let's look at other ways where our told communities have fostered stewardship. Um, and I'm going to run through a few. These are, you can steal them or borrow them or share them. This was in uh, Golden, Colorado. Okay, uh, it's not, you don't have a handout for this uh -oh. yet. Okay. Um, this is this slide is from Golden, Colorado. They posted the heart and soul statements in the town in the city council chambers, and they created a new development review checklist to ensure that new development aligned with their values. So they said, does you know does your new development carry out these heart and soul statements? Um, let's see. Another one is. I was, can I ask yeah. a question? So yeah. in Golden, did their town office take on the heart and soul project? Yeah. Is that so, why it's so yes. embedded? It's very much embedded. It's very different. Um, they also were one of the brown one or two towns that weren't helped fund to help develop this model. Um, and they had a staff person called the sustainability coordinator. And that was her job, to be the coordinator. So it really got embedded. Every step of the way, but also that sustainability piece was huge in their heart and soul statements. I mean, people wanted that. They want somebody keeping track of all these things. So, um, in the schools, the North Fork Valley, Colorado schools collected student videos about stereotypes and created a play called Hippies and Rednecks to continue relationship building. Because <laughs> yeah, that was one of the divisions in town. Uh, the residents and gardeners, one resident started a neighborhood association after looking for that feedback that came through Heart and Soul. In Polson, Montana, food co-op put art from Heart and Soul up on the walls. And the Heart and Soul team had annual volunteer awards. That's another thing that our executive council does, annual volunteer of the year. They put out a Heart and Soul report card. They have the Heart and Soul statements in a public place. And they have a booklet 
about what is heart and soul. So, so starting stewardship, let's get to that one already. Um, in your handout packet, this one, let's just quick look at a few of these things. So, oh, so a lot of these, a lot of these things, like the annual awards and volunteer awards, were already going on, and the idea seemed it seemed to be to match yeah. them. Like, like, Absolutely. When you could do that as part of criteria for being the volunteer, you know, how, how they have they some of these values? So this is the handout book. The first page we already looked. at, The second page we already looked at your goals. The next page is a table of contents. And then and the orange page is called Stewardship Plan Guidance. Um, and these are things that you might want to think about when you're developing your stewardship plan. And you turn the page. Um, questions to consider in your stewardship plan. Who are the people to have? How do you communicate? Uh, who's the point person? All of that. The purple page is the Gardner Area Duct Tape Council. That is their mission. So you don't have to recreate the wheel. You can look at that and see if that's what you like. Their overall goal is to strengthen collaboration. Now, as I mentioned, it's a lot like bank. Mm -hmm. Turn the page, the blue page. This is sustaining public engagement in your town. And we talked about that a little bit. And there's some strategies if you turn the page, the blue page. Um, the sustaining engagement, establishing the Citizens Academy, uh, adopting the resolution so the select boards can adopt the, the um, uh, statements, assessing existing public engagement activities, and strengthening community groups through skill building. Um, somebody mentioned board training. You know, I do a lot of that in. Um, a lot of boards can use kind of a refresher course of what's a what's a good board member and how do you get stronger and how do you collaborate, what are our skills and that kind of thing. So that's just building up your community. Um, the green page is using heart and soul to drive decisions. So can you use it to help inform planning to for evaluation, um, policy decisions, and to take action. And so there are examples there. And the next page is white, and it's an example of how uh, they advertise the work they've done. This is Monticello. Um, I think that's Pennsylvania, but it might be Ohio. Um, and let's see. So they had a four page flyer that outlined who they heard from, how did they engage, and they talked about their heart and soul statements and that's what they're working on. Yeah. Yep. Um, embedding, the orange one is embedding from around two towns, and again, that's just some of the things that they've done over uh, since Heart and Soul. Uh, look at page two of the orange under North Fork Valley. Paonia Town Manager values are the focus of interviews. Chance of the community advisory team member and the town clerk will be the town manager. And I mentioned that before. Can you interview? future staff talking about heart and soul. The next page is kind of lavender, and it's a resolution honoring the heart and soul. And this is um, one of the things that I've had passed. Um, community engagement efforts included the following activities. And if they adopted the values. The next page is a white page. It's a community report guard guide in the heart and soul way. Um, and this is have a report card. So could your stewardship team have a report card? I'm just um, it, it's a couple pages long, but on the third page they have a chart that looks like this. I yeah, like that. It's cool. Yeah. It's like have people in your community self-evaluate. You know, community engagement is one of our values. Well, how did we do last year? What how are we doing this year? What's our trend and what's our status now? Can we improve? And there's another report card on the following page. And that's an easy, it shows an easy way to summarize your lengthy statements with just a word or two. 
So there's a lot of examples there. The blue ones are, uh, this was a, another kind of report card. This was on aging in place. You might want to share this with your age family people. Um, you know, how prepared is your community? It's blue one. Uh, right after that, we got out of City Leaders Institute. Yep, City Leaders Institute. On aging in place. So my community has all of these or some of these, and a few of them. Housing, workforce development, transportation, mobility. And again, those are tied to their heart and soul statements. And then the purple, the next page is, um, I'm sorry, double check where that fell. This is the final one. Um, this is something you might do further out. Um, but you, it's, a, it's the directions for mapping heart and soul. So you can have, you can maybe a year from now, you can, um, you could also have done this in phase three, but you can use, have a group come together and um, figure out where in town does heart and soul sh show itself. You know, and, and let people self-evaluate, like do you really care about our grocery store or, or uh, so people get involved in the community. So those are all samples. Um, quickly, just I want to go through a few more of these um, uh, on the slides. I think it's this one. Um, this is your action plan up on the slides, and again, we've talked about that. Hi there. Hi. My, that's what I can steal sandwiches. Oh, yeah. Thanks, <laughs> guys. So, we've already talked about your action plan um, using that. Uh, here's an example that you had in expanded Cookies, through too. the annual cleanup day. You can't have a cookie. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So, they did a community uh, uh, cleanup day for residents, you know, for people that couldn't clean up their own yards. They also had a buddy bench, that was one of their action items, but publicizing mm -hmm. that. Making sure people know about that. Um, this is a video. Soul use keypad polling during town meetings. 
So they make sure that they're, and I have been hired in the past to do that. Um, this year they decided to buy their own keypads and let the town clerk run. They used to hire me to do it because they wanted somebody they felt they trusted that wasn't somebody who was influencing the vote, even though they can't really influence the keypads. But um, <laughs> you know, they they now are, are the, the clerk is very trusted in the town, and she's going to be doing the keypad polling. Um, Do they actually vote on things? Yeah, like yeah. official voting. Official voting. Uh, the only thing they don't use the keypads for are the bond votes because you have to have a ballot. You know, that, that has to have a by, by law has to have a ballot. Um, so, and, that, and, and like they do a lot more, they do neighborhood outreach, and that, the wonderful, wonderful thing I love is that the email addresses that were collected throughout their whole heart and soul process were turned over to the town because it was a joint process, and that became the town manager's email list, and every single time there's a meeting, that, even special uh, select board meetings, the town manager sends out the agenda, sends out his notes that he sends, the memo that he sends to the select board that goes to people. I get them, because I was on the list. Is this a new select person? I mean, town manager? Nope. Or, uh, nope. Uh, well, yes, it is not the same. You're right. It's, a, it's not the same town manager that was part of the heart and soul process. Oh, okay. he left. So, it's a, so he, he inherited this list. Uh, he has a newsletter. And the website's a little bit more up to date, not completely, but um, but the point is that it shifted the way information flowed. Mm. It used to be if you wanted to know what was on the agenda, you had to dig through the website and find that agenda, and you hope you it was the right one. <laughs> and then now the select the uh, town manager sends says you know next Thursday night we're going to be starting at 6 p.m. and we're doing this. And here's my memo, so you, the public, have the information that the select board has. Mm -hmm. And so if people get it, and you can ignore it if you want, but you know, it's, it, again, it flips the information flow. It's pretty cool. And then new people come to town, they want to get on the list, so this list grows. Mm -hmm. Some people drop off, but, um, and that's, you know, he, the, the uh, town manager has to do it anyway, so he just sends it out to everybody. Mm -hmm. And the select people are uh, regular, Emails and then everybody else is blind car carbon copied, and if it gets over a certain number, that email thinks it's spam, so you have to do like or you have to use a, the right, yeah, yeah you have to use like constant contact or something like that. Um, so we talked about basing decisions and uh, based on heart and soul. Here's a report card um, that they did in Laconia, for instance. Uh, this was actually from Florida. Um, mapping heart and soul, I talked about that. That was one of the, the handouts in that booklet. You know, can you go out and say this part of town or this neighborhood? That's an event you might use later on. Uh, taking action. Um, just check on this. Um, again, you know, making sure you publicize your success with your action plan. You know, don't let it just sit internally. But when things happen, Go to the select board saying, we just want you to know that one of the actions that we wanted, that your the people told us they wanted, that was high, high impact, high feasibility, has finished. And it's now in place. Um, I guess that's the final slide. Moving forward, you know, how do you embed this? And you've mentioned it a few times, making sure it sits with the kids, because they are the future leaders. Um, again, this is... The uh, celebration. You know, how do you how do you want to celebrate at the end of phase four? And I want to quickly tell you what Bucksport did. At the end of phase four, they had never had a summit, and you haven't either. Often, uh, in Heart Soul, in phase two and three, there's a community summit where the community members come out and draft the Heart and Soul statements. The community members actually take the raw data and write the statement about the environment with a facilitator. And it's a big event, and as a result, you have almost completed nine statements. And then they're you know, massaged a little bit. But um, So you never did that. You did it in-house, but you've gone back and forth to the public and said, did we get it right, that sort of thing. We actually did it in did sort it? of a combination of way. Okay. So I had seven different workshops that were open to the public. Okay. But had team members there I remember. as well. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So like, okay, I Tara, you right came right. to one, mm -hmm. and you hadn't, I don't think I had seen you involved in anything before that. 
So we had 30 okay. different people who were oh, regular wonderful. team members who participated yeah. in that as well? Yeah, okay, that's um, wonderful. And the reason we did that was just because we didn't, as a team, think if we had another big event, right. we would get the number of people to come out that we want. So you step, yes. And so I have been painting different in different towns. towns. Yeah, yeah, and I find that a, a, a lot of towns in Maine have done it that way. Other communities in other parts of the country have had this big summit where you know 100 people came out to a potluck dinner and drafted statements. Um, in Bucksport, so they did what you did somewhat, um, drop-in times and writing statements with the public and all that. So instead, paragraph of yes. <laughs> instead, at the end of phase four, they held a um, Kat and I have talked about this, but a community volunteer fair and summit. <laughs> And I know, you, yes, you, you've had mixed success with your volunteer fair, but what they did as a result of the action plan, having everybody committed, organizations committed to doing these actions, every organization set up a table and they said, we have committed to these two or three or five right. actions. So you knew what you're getting. You knew what you were yeah. yep. And then the public came and rotated to tables and they had a passport at the door. So when you checked in, you got a passport and if you went to you know, five out of the 20 or 15 out of the 20, you got a sticker from them, then you were in, entered into a raffle. Your passport was entered into a raffle, and they had like 15 prizes, gift certificates to area places, and donated mm -hmm. mostly. Some of them were donated by team members, but uh, Orton donated some goodies. Um, and so they had a potluck dinner. They had a program after people rotated to different um, organizations and the organizations use that time to get new volunteers so one of the incredible examples was the um, they wanted to have more flower boxes on Main Street and the Garden Club adopted that they said we'll do this action and they decided they're gonna have adopted flower boxes so at the volunteer fair they sold out on adopted boxes because people said I'll adopt the one in front of the insurance company, I'll adopt the one in front of the fire station, I'll adopt this one, and then they all got adopted that night. And they were thrilled. They didn't have to sell it anymore. It was going to be done. Um, and different organizations could use that booth time to recruit new volunteers. And it was like, you know, the Girl Scouts had a booth, and the school had a booth, and the garden, the town had a booth saying the things they were going to do. And the town manager was there. And then they had cake and ice cream after. They had a band that played. Where did they do this? Gym. In the gym. Yeah. Yep. And it was, uh, and organizations had to sign up in advance to have a booth. Um, and the program was amazing. It was like two hours. It was like 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Included dinner. Included some child care. Um, it was really amazing. So that was their summit. That was their grand you know, finale, their hurrah. Um, and that's the way they capped off their event. And so that's what carried the stewardship team. So Heart and Soul had a booth also. The stewardship team uh, said we're gonna, you know, we're gonna continue. And that's how they launched the stewardship team. Mm -hmm. So the point of this slide is don't forget to celebrate. And you know, don't just fade away. Make sure that you go out with a bang. And that's it. Thank you for joining us as we come together to build successful futures for small towns in America. And will I see you in my dreams once my soul is free?